Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. If you could all uh, take our seats, and then we can start. We will try and make this closing ceremony quick. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the closing session of IGF 2013, the 8th annual IGF meeting. I would like to introduce Mr. Ashwin Sassonko, who is the chair of the meeting since the minister could not be with us. Thank you, Mr. Tengatai Masango. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to open the closing ceremony of the IGF 2013 meeting in Bali. We will now hear from 10 speakers representing all stakeholders group who will make some closing remarks. It is my honor to introduce the first speaker, Ms. Elia Armstrong, United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, or UNDESA, speaking on behalf of Mr. Wu Hongbo, UN Undersecretary General for Economic and Social Affairs. Ms. Armstrong, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Distinguished participants, it is my pleasure to make some closing remarks on behalf of the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs as the Delegated Convener of the 8th IGF. I would first like to thank His Excellency, Mr. Tifantal Sembiring, Minister of Communications and Information Technology uh, of the Republic of Indonesia, represented here by Mr. Ashwin Sasongo, for chairing this meeting and the hard work of his ministry. I also recognize the Indonesian Multi-Stakeholder Organizing Committee for their tireless organizing efforts. I would like to thank APCHI, PANDI, and HIVOS for all their efforts as well, and all the other local and international organizations that contributed both financially and in kind, which allowed this meeting to happen. I also recognize UN colleagues from the Department of Public Information for their continuous coverage and outreach, our dear friends from the offices of Geneva, Bangkok, and Jakarta for providing excellent conference services, security, and interpretation, and of course the IGF Secretariat whose tireless work over the past year has made this IGF a success with the guidance of MAG. I give special thanks to the dedicated live transcription team for their outstanding work in enabling effective communication. And we should not forget the organizers of all the workshops and other numerous sessions that were central to the overall success of the IGF. Last but not least, I sincerely thank all of you as an integral part of the IGF community for your active and in-depth participation it was nice to see multi-stakeholder activism in action. Distinguished participants, nearly 1,500 delegates representing 111 different countries are with us in Bali. As in Baku at the 7th IGF, civil society was the highest represented stakeholder group. Remote participation again more than double the active participation. 135 workshops, open forums, and other meetings offered an unmatched menu of topics related to Internet governance for you to engage in. This year's IGF could not have come at a more opportune time. 
new cybersecurity threats and revelations of widespread internet surveillance are only two of the many emerging issues that the multi-stakeholder community must address. Your deliberations will now be taken forward into other processes in 2014 and beyond. As we have heard, 2013 and 2014 are run-up years for defining a post-2015 vision of sustainable development. They are also run-up years for the WISIS Plus 10 review. Last month, the 68th UN General Assembly session launched the high-level political forum that replaces the Commission on Sustainable Development and will serve as the vehicle to implement the real plus 20 outcome. This week, while we discussed building bridges, enhancing multi-stakeholder cooperation for growth and sustainable development in Bali, the General Assembly's second committee met to take up ICTs for development in New York. Many delegates advocated for greater broadband deployment, reducing the cost of technologies and capacity building for greater use and application, as well as an upgrade of the quality and quantity of telecommunication infrastructure. They called for an open and accessible Internet where future users and innovators can safely and securely reside. These discussions point out to the need for ICTs to enable sustainable development. We at DESA have also identified inclusive governance as an enabler of sustainable development. It seems that Internet governance targets both of these enablers. The IGF allows for collective visioning of the deployment of the Internet, governed through a bottom-up, inclusive, transparent, and accountable multi-stakeholder process to reach out to all peoples to have more fulfilling lives. Considering this collective challenge, the 8th IGF, in my opinion, has delivered on its theme of building bridges. The UN looks forward to convening the 9th IGF in 2014 to continue deliberations on the great enablers of sustainable development, the Internet, and inclusive governance. This closure brings us to the next IGF cycle. Let us work together to ensure that the IGF continues to grow and prosper. Let us strengthen our existing partnerships, build new ones, and invite new stakeholders to the IGF community. I wish you a safe trip home from this beautiful island of Bali. See you next year. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Armstrong, for your remarks. Our next speaker is Mr. Marcus Kumar, the interim chair of the Open Consultations and MAG meetings. Mr. Kumar, you have, Ms. Kumar, you have the floor. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues and friends, I have the honor and privilege to chair the preparatory process of this meeting, and I'm pleased with the result. In the IGF tradition, this was the best IGF ever. I would like to thank my colleagues from the multi-stakeholder advisory group who worked hard to put this program together. And thank you all. You helped to make this event a success. When preparing the IGF, we took the recommendations of the CSTD Working Group on IGF seriously. In particular, we followed some recommendations and aimed to shape the session in a way to provide takeaways and more tangible outputs of the main and focus sessions. The outcome documentation will map out converging and diverging opinions on given questions. We reached out and invited all stakeholders to give us input by formulating key policy questions for each session to shape the discussion. We improved the integration of national and regional IGF initiatives into the main program and we built a comprehensive capacity building track and introduced orientation sessions in order to facilitate the integration of newcomers. This year, IGF, we also introduced innovation into what has been a traditional agenda. 
Many of the themes were high up on the policy agenda, ranging from the role of governments to Internet governance and multi-stakeholder principles, human rights, cybercrime and spam, to the contribution of the Internet to sustainable development and the post-2015 agenda. As in previous years, the IGF again presented a unique platform where difficult issues can be addressed in a constructive dialogue between all stakeholders. This was particularly manifest in the many discussions on government surveillance, and one important conclusion emerged. There is a need for an open multi-stakeholder discussion on how to find high-level principles which can guide governments in this sensitive policy area and establish trust between all stakeholders. In other words, the IGF has again proved its worth. It proved to be a one-stop shop, an annual meeting point where the community gathers to exchange information. This also reflects a recommendation of the working group on IGF improvements. This year's meeting managed to catalyze broad support. This energy needs to be preserved and translated into a stable and sustainable funding situation of the IGF Secretariat. Let me make use of this opportunity to call on all stakeholders to contribute this to this cause. Of course, there is room for further improvements, and we will work hard towards this objective. When a meeting is over, preparations start for the next meeting. This IGF is over today, and we need to start the planning for the 2014 meeting tomorrow. We will, begin, we will start by, with a, a review process and ask stakeholders to tell us what worked well and what worked less well and what needs to be improved next year's meeting. The IGF Secretariat will also issue a call for nominations for the MAG renewal shortly with the objective to have a renewed MAG in place for the first planning meeting in February next year. Let me conclude by thanking the EGF, IGF Secretariat led by Cheng Etai. They all did an amazing job with very limited resources. My thanks also go to UN DESA, represented here by Elia Armstrong for providing the institutional home to the IGF Secretariat. And last but not least, a big thank you to the Indonesian hosts for their gracious hospitality and excellent organization. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Kumar, for your remarks, and thank you also for the applause. <laughs> Our next speaker is Mr. Semi Pangrapan from the Indonesian Internet Association, Indonesian Internet Service Provider Associations. And also, Mr. Pangrapan is the IGF 2013 Indonesian Organizing Committee. Mr. Pangrapan, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the time and opportunity. This is my biggest fear to speak in front of the public. This, I've never been speaking in front of the public, so uh, forgive me if I have uh, so, looked so nervous. Distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, APGI, the Indonesian Internet Service Provider Association, which has established in 1996 and has to grow to its current membership of 283 ISPs. In 1997, we were appointed as a national internet registry by APNIC, and by now, we are allocated IP address for more than 600 institutions in Indonesia. The association also operated the Indonesian internet exchange in nine locations nationwide. ABGIP first encountered the IGF in 2010. In November 2012, we are signed the IDIGF declaration between the civil society and private sector stakeholders with the endorsement of the government of Indonesia. Since then, 
We have been committed to a multi-stakeholder internet government process in Indonesia. Our preparation for the 2013 IGF has not been easy, but it's demonstrated how an open dialogue and open mind can serve a solid ground for a multi-stakeholder internet government practice, which we believe is a triumph for future generation of internet user. The operational of event has also conducted by committee from various institutions, a true multi-stakeholder collaboration. IP person 6 has a special place in this IGF. We deploy IP person 6 through multi-homing provider and we are happy to announce that IP person 6 traffic reaches more than 20% of the total traffic, which is more than the average uh, IP person 6 traffic in the world. On behalf of the Indonesian IGF committee, I would like to express our gratitude to UN DESA, IGF Secretariat, and to all members of MAG for the support and trust in conducting the 8th IGF in Bali, Indonesia. We would like to, to thank donor agency and sponsor both nationally and internationally, the Ministry of the Communication, Information and Technology of Indonesia, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia for all kindness support. And last but not least, I would like to express our special gratitude to all committee members and volunteers without your dedication and hard working. This event could not be done as it is. I would like to ask you to stand up for all committee and uh, volunteer who have the IGFs. It Uh, at the end of my uh, speech, I would like to thank for all participants for your contribution and vibrant discussion in this IGF. Your idea and argument will fundamentally shape the Internet government globally in the, in the near future. And at the end, we would like to apologize if for any inconveniences incurred during the event. We wish you a pleasant flight back home and please enjoy Bali beforehand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pangrapan, for your remarks and also for the support of all the volunteers. Our next speaker is Ms. Anne, Anne Rachel Ina from the COO of the AFRINIC. Ms. Ina, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here with you. It's a pleasure to be at IGF 8 in Bali. And uh, on behalf of my colleagues, I would like to thank, uh, you know, the host first for, uh, you know, uh, the really good and uh, wonderful um, welcome we received here. So we were in Montevideo earlier this month. And our organizations responsible for the management and coordination over the Internet technical architecture infrastructure met to discuss, among other things, the future of Internet governance. And we identified the need for ongoing efforts to address ongoing challenges. To this end, we agreed to catalyze community-wide efforts towards the evolution of global multi-stakeholder Internet cooperation. What better place to start these efforts than the IGF? The meeting here in Bali allowed us to reach out to the stakeholders to explore how to move forward. Once again, if need there was, the IGF has proved its usefulness as a platform multi-stakeholder dialogue. In our view, there is no better way to discuss important and delicate issues. It is a truism but no stakeholder group can do it alone. Policy makers need the input from the technical community.
the legal and regulatory framework needs to evolve based on solid understanding of the underlying technology. Policy makers also need to understand what is economically viable and policy makers as well as technologists need to understand what is socially acceptable. The business community and civil society need certainty that their objectives can be met and their own important concerns can be addressed. That we have a safe and progressive path forward. Not everything that is feasible is desirable. For this reason, the dialogue between all stakeholder groups is essential for a healthy Internet ecosystem. As signatories of the Montevideo Statement, we have followed with interest the discussions after this publication, including the discussions during this week at IGF. We appreciate the generally positive reception that the statement received and the opportunity to open inclusive discussions since then regarding the way forward. We intend to continue the discussions beyond the meeting in a fully open manner with the aim to improve the mechanisms for multi-stakeholder internet cooperation. We encourage wide participation by all parties, governments, civil society, business and technical community, on an equal footing in the spirit of the IGF. We hope that all interested parties will be involved and there is much work to be done in planning and preparation for the meeting that is expected to take place in Brazil in May 2014. While the proposed Brazil meeting was not a subject of discussion in Montevideo, we welcome this one-off opportunity to advance a discussion on how best to address global Internet governance challenges. We hope that it will be possible to maintain the open and collaborative spirit of internet cooperation which we, witness, we witnessed at the Bali IGF meeting. It is indeed for the further evolution of internet governance in the preparatory work for the meeting in Brazil. Our efforts to catalyze community-wide efforts are complementary to and build on the IGF. This week has convinced us that we need to strengthen the capacity of the IGF to prepare, run, and follow up to the annual meetings. The Secretariat is understaffed and underfunded, and we call, we are committed to put the IGF Secretariat on a stable and sustainable financial basis, and we call for matching commitments from business and civil society, each according to their means. This is for the future of the Internet and the benefits it can bring to all of us. We also call for the UN to help us in our efforts and to strengthen the Secretariat. The UN can help us to reach out to potential donors. Furthermore, the position of Special Advisor to the Secretary General has been vacant for nearly three years. It is urgent to fill this vacancy. We ask the UN staff present here to convey this message to the Secretary General. Thank you, Madam Armstrong. It was an excellent meeting. On a particularly technical note, as you just heard from our colleague from the local committee, you may not have noticed that IPv6 services were provided on the IGF network, but it was used by a great many of you for your connectivity this week. In fact, Internet traffic averaged 30 megabytes per second on IPv6 out of 150 megabytes in total during the week. IPv6 represented over 20% of all IGF traffic, which we were, of course, very glad to see. Let me conclude by thanking our hosts for their hospitality and efficiency in providing the infrastructure for this year's meeting. Their smiling faces contributed much to the success of the event. Let me also thank the UN and the IGF Secretariat for their hard work. Shengatai and his team deserve to be commended for organizing such a rich, 
such a rich and vibrant meeting on a shoestring. Thank you very much. Really, attention. Thank you, Messino, for your remarks. Our next speaker is Ms. Sita Lakshmi from HIFOS, the Humanist Institute for Cooperation Indonesia. Indonesia, and member, she is also the member of the IGF 2013 Indonesian Organizing Committee. Ms. Lakshmi, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. This event started in November 2012 when we established the Indonesia Internet Governance Forum, or what we call IDIGF. The establishment of the forum was based upon our own recognitions that management of the Internet is not just a technical matter, but also an engagement with issues of economy, human rights, law, security, education, and development. Internet governance, therefore, calls for the active participation of a wide stakeholder. Starting with these values, the Indonesia Internet Governance Forum committees believes that multi-stakeholder principles should be reflected in our work from the beginning to the end. We have implemented this principle during our preparation for this IGF by ensuring multi-stakeholder representative at all level. We have engaged government agencies, businesses, civil society, academicians, and technical communities by appointing their representative in the steering and organizing committees. This multi-stakeholder process also shapes the way we raise financial support for the event. This was, and still is, a challenging journey for us, but we believe that by sustaining this principle among Indonesia Internet communities, we are on our way to building a durable multi-stakeholder Internet governance framework in Indonesia. The Indonesian civil society has played an important role in this journey. Civil society sits as equal with other stakeholders, and together we ensure that transparency and accountability principles are upheld. To put this in practice, we have decided that the audited financial statement for the 2013 IGF will be provided publicly. We believe that this step represents a milestone both for Indonesia and IGF globally. Finally, allow me to express my gratitude to those who have taken part in the preparation of this IGF and especially to recognize the energy, the passion, and the sleepless nights that many of us have kept during, during the process. We would like to thank our supporting organization and sponsors. And for all the participants, I hope you all have had memorable discussion and experiences during your time in Bali. Thank you very much and see you in the next IGF. Thank you, Ms. Lakshmi. And uh, Ms. Lakshmi also get a significant role in setting up the IDIGF Indonesia, the supporting this to this event. Our next speaker is Mr. Firat Bhatia, Chairman, Communication and Digital Economy Committee, Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, President of IEA AT&T South Asia. Mr. Bhatia, you have the floor. Chairman, Excellencies, Distinguished Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen, first, on behalf of business, I thank Bali, Terimakasi Bali. As the eighth IGF draws to a close, it is my pleasure to address you on behalf of global business community through the International Chamber of Commerce and the BASIS Initiative, that is, Business Action to Support Information Society for those who might not be aware. On behalf of myself and the BASIS members, the business would like to sincerely thank our hosts, the Government of Indonesia, for their warm hospitality and for the opportunity to convene in the beautiful city of Bali for this year's IGF. In coming together in this forum, we have been able to discuss pressing issues on how we can collectively build a more secure and accessible Internet for all 
one which will enable us to continue and expand its value as a positive, unparalleled social and economic force. Over the next past few days, we have exchanged best practices and debated a wide range of key topics that will continue to pose questions of policy as the Internet evolves further. Questions extending from infrastructure deployment to mobile innovation, to new engineering and business models for machine-to-machine -machine deployment, to the topic of government surveillance and distinct issues of commercial practices with data, and of course the conversations about human rights, free speech, security, mm -hmm. and data protection. All these topics have a place at a multi-stakeholder setting of the IGF. Indeed, where else can they be discussed in such an open and comprehensive manner? While business continues to progress the multi-stakeholder model of governance, it also recognizes that now, more than ever, it is time to re-energize the concept and practice of consultative multi-stakeholder governance. At the time when we are witnessing significant energy in the dynamics between governments and other stakeholder groups, we need to promote greater cooperation amongst all organizations across the spectrum, civil society, private sector, government, academia, and the technical community. Business joins other stakeholders in supporting the multi-stakeholder approach rather than the creation of new entities. It is integral to strengthening communication between diverse groups and for building a unified approach to Internet policy development. In the context of all the valuable conversations here, we have learned several new initiatives designed to enhance and reaffirm multi-stakeholder participation in Internet governance from Montevideo to Brazil. Business underscores the need for all initiatives to find a structured way to appropriately involve all stakeholders on an equal footing in the development and implementation of these proposals and to assure transparency and accountability to stakeholders. It must be a journey to which everyone feels invited to contribute. IGF remains the home of the most inclusive debate. The IGF is the greatest testimony to the impact of a multi-stakeholder model in sharing opinion and perspectives and providing platform to inform policy making around the world at all levels. Nothing should be allowed to obstruct the value of IGF continues to deliver. That is why business continues to champion IGF and we look ahead to these initiatives. We believe that the model of inclusive participation embodies in the heart of delivering successful outcomes in the future. A great deal of seismic change has happened this year. The world has come to understand more clearly than ever before the important role that government policy can play in global Internet and the way in which it can grow or fragment. As a result, governance of Internet is under more scrutiny than it has ever been before, and we must work together to ensure that it continues to serve the public interest and it continues to grow in a manner that fosters availability and adoption. We must be careful to avoid fragmentation of Internet through national policies that dilute its global nature. Business agrees that governments globally have an important role in Internet policy discussions. Equally, it recognizes that achieving sustainable outcomes requires a respectful and informed balance of interests amongst all stakeholders based on a meaningful engagement and a comprehensive understanding of the consequences of any policy decision. To bring my remarks now to a, to a close, we have accomplished a lost lot in the last four days and indeed in the last eight years. It is for this reason that the business calls for IGF's continuity beyond 2015. Business opposes a multilateral or intergovernmental approach to Internet governance. It is clear to me and to the rest of the business community that having a meaningful, representative and inclusive process for debate and decision making is fundamental to supporting the Internet's dynamic growth. For this to happen, we must strengthen the financial and political mechanism that supports IGF and his leadership, as has been mentioned by the speakers before me. IGF remains vital for protecting and promoting a free and open web on which business thrive 
and which continues to empower societies, economies, our youth, and especially the underprivileged across the globe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bhatia. Now I would like to invite our next speaker, Ms. Kesha Taylor from TechSoup Global. Ms. Taylor, you have the floor. Good afternoon, all. And thank you, Bali, Indonesia, for hosting the Internet Governance Forum. Everywhere I went, the creativity and friendliness and hospitality of the Indonesian people reminded me of the need to remember the ultimate beneficiaries of the Internet, its users. I have been given the honor of speaking on behalf of civil society today, an IGF stakeholder that is as vast as it is diverse but one that is essential to continuing the growth of the Internet and sustainable development for us all. This year's theme focused on building bridges, and today it is only through cooperation and multi-stakeholder practices that this can be achieved. I commend the MAG for supporting the rotation of meetings to encourage participation by multiple stakeholders in various regions of the world, but also e-participation because as we know, sometimes it is not just distance, lack of support and lack of resources that prevent more widespread participation, but limited awareness, language, and the constraints that come with international travel today. This year's IGF finds much more engagement of youth, reflection on past IGF successes, and thought on the, thoughts on the possibilities for the future of its multi-stakeholder approach. In addition, the possibilities of data for socioeconomic development, but also the challenges this use presents, was also certainly center stage. This is important. It is estimated that by 2020, the digital universe will reach 40 zettabytes, which is 40 trillion gigabytes of data, or 5,200 gigabytes of data for every person on Earth. As, at this IGF, one which had a majority of civil society participants. We could also observe that sessions notably changed from lectures to discussions and remote participation where connect connectivity was achieved continued to invo involve and inform. We must innovate and use evolving technology to ensure that no matter the distance, we all have a say. Access to the internet has been has in the past been a key topic in IGF discussion. Today, arguably many presume that access will increase, particularly because of the proliferation of mobile phones and other initiatives to, to promote access to the internet. However, coming from a small island state myself, Trinidad and Tobago, the limitations and challenges of internet access in small island states, lesser developed economies and rural areas must continue to be discussed so that progress can indeed be made and the next billion users from across the globe can also connect and not be left behind. I have been focusing on the benefits of the use of data for development, but in a way that also addresses arising concerns, which include privacy and inclusion, and the ethics of such use for many years, including in workshops at this very IGF. This year, I found that many workshops even those that were not data related, also started to address these issues. This is a challenge, but as the development of technology continues to intertwine with the use of data, it is one we must urgently address. These issues can be mitigated by cooperation of all stakeholders, inclusion of civil society and learning from each other and about each other. The open data world is growing in part because of the idea that as we continue, because of the idea that you would never, that because of the idea that uh, by opening up your data, someone somewhere will do something useful for, with it that you would never have dreamt of. It is with this in mind that I ask that we continue to open up our discussion 
and as well as internet governance processes to others and support collaboration to ensure that the right solutions to existing and unforeseen problems are found for the continued growth of the internet and for sustainable development. I hope the discussions of this week and the friendliness and innovation of the Balinese people will resonate with you all. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to represent and speak on behalf of civil society. Terima kasih. Ms. Taylor, thank you for your remarks. And it seems everybody now is start to learn Indonesian words. Huh? Terima kasih. And also, I'm using the batik here. This is Friday. And Indonesian in Indonesia, usually on Friday, we use batik shirt to our office. So, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is Ambassador Benedicto Fonseca Filho, Head of the Department of Scientific and Technological Affairs, Ministry of External Division of Brazil. Ambassador Fonseca, you have the floor. Anybody from Brazil? No? So, we have Everton. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, actually, Ambassador Benedicto had an earlier flight, and I present his excuses that he is not able to be with us at this final session. So in name of the Brazilian government, I have the pleasure to congratulate you for the excellent meeting that we all had and the opportunity that we have to be together here to discuss openly and frankly all those issues that are of highest concern to us related to the future of Internet governance. The Brazilian government is fully committed to the IGF as it could be seen by the high level of representation that we've had at this meeting, headed by our Minister of Communications, Minister Paulo Bernardo, who delivered a speech at the opening session, and also by the uh, strong presence of a multi-stakeholder delegation from our own country, including members of the civil society, business, academic communities, as well as the government. It is a great honor for us to be able to come here with an open proposal and an open invitation that now I renew to everyone uh, to join us in planning, organizing, and participating at the meeting that we are planning to, hold, to host in Brazil next year. It is uh, with these final uh, remarks that I leave this open invitation with you, and I thank you all for uh, the attention and the interaction that we've had in this very productive meeting. Uh, thanks to the secretariat, to the organizers, and to all of those who were involved and dedicated themselves for such a great event. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, our next speaker is Mr. Eckhart Mayer from the City of Mexico. Mr. Mayer, you have the floor, please. La Delegación de México agradece la destacada labor para conducir este foro, el cual nos ha permitido un diálogo fructífero entre los distintos sectores que conformamos el ecosistema del Internet. Nos permite sentar las bases para mejorar el Internet y lograr un diálogo transparente, inclusivo y eficaz. Internet es una herramienta fundamental para el desarrollo y como tal debe evolucionar en pro de la humanidad. Es por ello que México está comprometido en fomentar las políticas públicas que promuevan el desarrollo digital, el acceso y un mejor uso de las tecnologías de la información y comunicaciones. El presidente de México, Enrique Peña Nieto, ha señalado que la brecha digital en nuestros días 
es el analfabetismo del siglo XXI y por ello debemos de trabajar arduamente para estrecharla. Por este motivo, el Plan Nacional de Desarrollo de México establece que las tecnologías de la información y comunicadas deben de ser utilizadas para lograr los cinco grandes metas nacionales. Avanzar en la construcción de un México en paz, incluyente, más próspero, con educación de calidad y con responsabilidad global. Partiendo de tal escenario, el Gobierno de México reconoce la importancia del uso y adopción de las TICs para promover el desarrollo. Un primer paso en este sentido se dio en el mes de junio del año 2003, 2013, cuando se publicó una histórica reforma constitucional en materia de telecomunicaciones, comunicaciones, orientada a crear una mayor competencia económica en el sector, garantizando el acceso equitativo a las telecomunicaciones. Esta reforma tiene como base tres pilares. Asegurar la cobertura universal de servicios de televisión, radio, telefonía y datos para todo el país. Buenos precios para todos los niveles socioeconómicos para que puedan acceder a estos servicios. Calidad en el servicio y en los contenidos de tal manera que se cuente con servicios más rápidos, confiables y diversos. Asimismo, la reforma de telecomunicaciones establece el derecho al libre acceso a la información plural y oportuna, así como la obligación del Estado de garantizar el derecho de acceso a las tecnologías de la información y comunicaciones, incluido el, el de banda ancha. En este sentido, el gobierno mexicano implementa una estrategia digital que complejiza objetivos específicos y líneas de acción para mejorar el uso de las tecnologías de la información y comunicaciones en pro del desarrollo. En el plano internacional estamos convencidos de que las tecnologías de información representan una oportunidad histórica para acelerar el desarrollo de las naciones. Por ello, México considera que debemos tomar acciones que fortalezcan la infraestructura existente, existente, promuevan el uso y el desarrollo de servicios a través de Internet para toda la humanidad y reduzcan la brecha digital para lograr una sociedad más justa y participativa. En general, lo que se busca es que la digitalización maximice su impacto económico y social y político en beneficio de la calidad de vida de las personas. Es por ello que celebramos los avances alcanzados en el Foro de Gobernanza de Internet y en un ánimo constructivo, me complace anunciar que el Gobierno de México se suma a los esfuerzos que se han desarrollado en los diversos sectores aquí involucrados en, la, en este extraordinario evento. Y está en la mejor disposición para que el Foro de Gobernanza de Internet se lleve a cabo en México en el año 2016. El Presidente de México tiene el firme compromiso de que durante su gobierno se participe activamente en el debate y los procesos vinculados a la gobernanza de Internet y que sin duda se suma de relevancia a fortalecer los objetivos estratégicos que se han plantado en estos asuntos. Muchas gracias y esperamos verlos en México en el año 2016. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next, I would like to invite the representative of the next year's IGF host country, Mr. Typhoon. Akarer, Chairman of the Information Technologies and Communication Authority of Turkey, and Mr. Iksan Durdu, Advisor to the Minister, Ministry of Transport and Commission of Turkey, on behalf of the Turkish delegation, to say a few words. Mr. Akarer, Mr. Durdu, please join us on the podium. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to introduce ourselves. I am Dr. Tayfun Acerar. I am president of ICT Authority of Turkey. Our uh, authority deals with all regulatory issues in ICT, as well as internet development policies in Turkey. I will also introduce Mr. Isan Durdu and Mr. Jabir Bilirgen. They are advisors to Minister of Transport and Communication of Turkey. I personally thank for your support in choosing in Istanbul as the next meeting city of this event. Uh, I, I, uh, in now, I want to invite Mr. Isan Durdu, and uh, he will give additional information on 19th IGF 2014. Thank you very much, uh, all of you and host country, Indonesia for hospitality. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Arjaresh. And uh, yes, 
Uh, my name is Ihsan Durdu. Uh, I am the advisor to the Minister of Transport and Communications of Turkey. And uh, we would like to officially declare that we, as Ministry of Transport and Communications of Turkey, are the candidate for the 9th IGF 2014 to organize in the beautiful historical city of Istanbul, Turkey. As a Republic of Turkey, we strongly believe in multi-stakeholder processes, in internet governance. We find IGF as the right platform to discuss all details of governance issues. The challenges that we decision makers face in policy development can be best handled at this platform. Uh, it's comprehensive and detailed discussions help us to guide our policies. We value IGF and show our commitment for its existence and its success by offering our contributions. That's why we are interested to hold the conference next year. Uh, we appreciate all the efforts made by ITU, UN, and other multi-stakeholders to keep this IGF platform processing, progressing. We would also appreciate ICANN's support on this. As many of you know already that ICANN has chosen Istanbul for their next hub after Los Angeles as part of their internationalization process. As we as our NGOs, industry, individual citizens, and our government appreciate ICANN very much for its decision. We thank all ICANN management, including Director of Board, Steve Crocker, CEO Fadishadi, and all the board members for their decision. We thank all ICANN community for their support on this progress. We would like to confirm our support for the internalization of ICANN and their Istanbul Hub project. We will also do our best to make sure that it would contribute to its development of Internet of the world. It's also very pleasing to see that many international entities choose Istanbul for their regional hub. Now, we would like to show a video on Istanbul and Turkey. Please.
we would like to invite, invite you all to 9th IGF event in September of 2014 in Istanbul. We are sure that you will leave Istanbul with best memories after the event. Looking forward to seeing you all in Istanbul. Thank you. Mr. Akar and Mr. Dudu, thank you for your information about the next 2015 IGF. So, hope to see all of you in Turkey. Yeah? Uh, just before I deliver the closing remarks, I would like to invite IGF Secretariat Mr. Cengetai to give some information and also deliver his info information. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, first of all, two corrections. Um, the Speaker from Mexico meant to say 2016 in the event that the IGF uh, mandate is renewed for another five years after 2015. And Mr. Sasanko meant to say 2014 for next year. <laughs> yes, this is the first time we've had um, three host countries announcing, so yes, there's bound to be some <laughs> um, confusion. Okay, um, I'll just like to say a few words. Uh, this year has been a rather more interesting year than most as far as IGF um, are concerned, and I'd really like to express my appreciation to uh, everybody, but first of all, I'd just like to mention a few people. First of all, the Indonesian Organizing Committee. Um, I think we worked really well together, and we spent a very long time communicating and um, organizing this event. I'd like to thank them, especially um, from the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology. I'd like to say a special thanks to um, Mr. Ashwin Sasonko, the Honorary Chair of the MAG, and also all your help he's given us. And also Mr. Morigeno, he is the um, MAG representative. Uh, from Indonesia, if he's there, we can just take a hand. Thank you very much. Um, it was his initiative. And also from APTI, I'd first of all like to thank the chair of APTI, Mr. Semi. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. And a special thanks to Hendewin Saputra. I, I think. I think when he first saw me, he thought he didn't think that this seemingly mild-mannered person would give him so many headaches <laughs> on the night, but um, everything worked out great, and I really do appreciate it. I mean, we, I could call him at any time, even 1 o'clock Indonesian time, and he would pick up an answer. I have no idea when he slept, but thank you. Mm -hmm. And also to Donnie and Cheetah, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> From the Indonesian community, uh, we interacted with them, you know, every other day, weekly, um, organizing this um, meeting. And lastly, from the Indian committee, I'd like to thank Ola. I don't know if she's here. O Ola Sirak. She was the one who organized the room arrangements and everything. It's all her, and she was very good at it. Thank you. And then, um, first of all, from the UN side, I would like to say a, a very special thank you to um, Eli Armstrong and the Development Management Branch, Slava, Riza, and Victoria. They're not here, but they did <laughs> a lot giving back up to the Secretariat. We're a very small Secretariat, and they picked up the slack when we had a lot to do. Thank you. And my IGF team, um, as you know, there's only one full-time staff, but it's a team effort. And as you can see, if they could please stand up. Most of them are very, very young. Laura, who's been by my side in the office this year, if she's in. 
Uh, where? Oh, there she is. Yes, Laura. Thank you. And Brian, of course. He's based in New York. Did most of the writing. Serena, who volunteered to join um, for this meeting. Um, it's very good because, as you know, the IGF Secretary depends on volunteers, and Serena has always been very willing to help, and also Manju. Uh, Anju, sorry. Anju. <laughs> very, stand up, please. <laughs> I mean, they don't get paid, and they've been working long hours, and I like to thank them a lot. And also Faz and I, Edmund, who joined the, the team just now. And Daniel, if he's here, Daniel has been the conference coordinator since the very beginning. I've been eight IGFs with him. He's right at the back there. Um, over, what, 40 years of experience? 60? Sorry, <laughs> 30 years of experience. <laughs> and also the one intern we have which uh, managed to come here. Of course, interns aren't paid, but she worked very hard. Uh, Siri Rat, I don't know if she's in the room. Um, no, she's not. She's probably working in the back there. No, thank you. And also I'd like to thank the interpreters, the webcast, the, Un the UNON team. Um, Eduardo, is he here? Uh, they come from Nairobi. And I am sure you've noticed that the network has worked much better this year. I mean, in part due to FTE, of course. I mean, they're brilliant. In Indonesia is a um, internet society, internet countries. And also with our team, um, the webcasting, etc. They handle all of that from UNON. Um, that's the United Nations office in Nairobi and DPI for the news briefings. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris for the security, keeping us safe, Chris Ankerson. And then lastly but not least, I keep the most important stakeholders last. Uh, I would like to thank the MAG. Um, I think we look, uh, they really did make a great program um, for this year. I'd like to thank them very much. And Marcus, of course, who led the MAG as the chair. Thank you. And the last, of course, the idea of community. I mean, this meeting would not have come about without um, the idea of community, and they really did come together and put the full force behind it. That's why we're sitting here today. Um, I'd like to thank them very much. And so, just thank you. Uh, merci, my bad French. <laughs> um, I'd like to say Kitos. <laughs> and also, Terama Kisi. Um, Handerin Young Terra Homat. If, if I'm understandable. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sengatai. First of all, of course, I would like to apologize for the mistakes in the numbering and years. It seems that after this IGF, my mathematics get a bit worse. <laughs> Cannot distinguish between 14 and 15. <laughs> Finally, anyway, allow me to deliver my short closing, closing remarks in this IGF. It is really a great pleasure for me to be able to speak here on this wonderful moment on behalf of the Ministry of Communication and the Technology of Indonesia. I would like to thank the IGF Indonesia and IGF Secretariat once more for all their hard work and effort day and night in preparing this international event which we have been seen experienced from the first day we arrived at the airport. I, to, I would like to thank once again to UNDESA and all Indonesian regional and international stakeholders involved for their support to make these multi-stakeholders convene in Bali. Last but not least, I would like to thank all speakers and participants for all your valuable contributions. I believe your information statements, questions, comments could influence or inspire others and will enhance the value of cyberspace and chart the future direction of the Internet. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the word governing Internet was repeated throughout this forum and I believe this is recognition and demonstrate the contribution of all stakeholders. Furthermore, we also noted Governing Internet is a multi-stakeholder responsibility. It is pivotal to bring more players into the governance of Internet, including civil societies, technical communities, academia, and governments. 
to gather this multi-stakeholder group, this multi-stakeholder group should be able to maximize the positive activities and minimize the negative activities in the internet. Although the positive and negative values may be different from countries to countries, but with mutual understanding and respect based on cyber ethics value, I believe that this great job can be carried out successfully. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the world of your space and cyberspace are in inextricably merged and linked. I quoted the word from our colleagues who explained the important values of ethics to our society. There is no society without ethics. I believe it is true, both in real space as well as in cyberspace. Indonesia sees the importance for global community, community to take action hand in hand in creating a safe, secure and tolerant cyberspace. Since the last few years, Indonesia have shared this view during a number of international fora such as ITU Council 2011 in Geneva, ITU Council 2012 also in Geneva, Revi uh, discussion on the revise, revising of the article of ITR, International Telecommunication Regulations, during the World Conference on International Telecommunication, WECIT 12 in Dubai, December 2012, as well as the contribution, our contributions about cyber security and cooperation among ITU member countries during the ITU Council 2013 in Geneva. Therefore, Indonesia will promote its view in some near future global meetings. Some of them has been mentioned, like the discussion on the post-WSIS agenda to establish multi-stakeholder preparatory platform for 2015 and beyond that would be held in Egypt in April 2014. We will also follow it up in the WTO ministerial meeting in this coming month of December 2013 in Bali particularly to related issues on e-commerce, e-business, etc. And also International Summit on Internet Governance for Government, Industry, Civil Society and Academia in Brazil, April 2014. And of course, in the next IGF in 2014 too. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, soon each of us will go back to our country, to our organization and do our business as usual. I hope all the events that you have joined from high-level leaders meeting to each of focus session of workshop in this Internet Governance Forum will inspire you to strengthen and enhance our multi-stakeholders cooperations. Last but not least, I also hope that the beauty of Bali, along with the richness of the culture and values, will remain in our memories. With these comments, I would like to close the 8th Internet Governance Forum meeting and pass the chairman back to, back to you and Disa. Thank you very much. And uh, as usual we do in the IGF meeting, I would like to close the meeting with uh, this big hammer. We open it with the gong and we close with a well, smaller gong. <laughs> <laughs>